Hi, uh, so my name is uh, Dennis Yee, and uh, I lead business development at uh, Gameville USA um, back in El Segundo. Um, for those of you guys that aren't too familiar with us, uh, we are a global developer and publisher uh, founded back in 2000 um, in Seoul, South Korea. And now we have offices in US where I am, um, where we are responsible for uh, signing and licensing and publishing you know, global deals. And we have offices in Beijing and Tokyo as well. Um, so moving forward, uh, you know, I'll be doing a, just a brief talk um, on doing business in Korea, a high-level introduction. And uh, I'll start with just the uh, quick, quick numbers. I mean, I won't you know, inundate you guys with uh, you know, too many numbers and bore you with that sort of stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll try to keep it short, and uh, hopefully I can provide you with you know, practical um, you know, feedback and some tips. Um, so you know, as Chris shared earlier, um, you know, in terms of the Korean market, you know, there, there is room for, uh, for growth. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a population where, you know, um, gaming has essentially become a lifestyle, you know, where even esports is, is a viable career option now. Um, you know, if, if you look at the, uh, the slide behind me, you'll see that, you know, with the, the, the Flurry report shows that, you know, the online uh, PC gaming market is at 2.8 billion, um, and the mobile gaming market is at 1 billion. And so there's a lot of room for growth in, t in terms of uh, mobile gaming. Um, but uh, you know, not to contradict uh, Curtis right before me, um, I, I want to point out um, this flurry chart. And you'll notice that you know, while they're both increasing um, you know, pretty rapidly and pretty significantly, you'll notice that from 2012 to 2013, um, South Korea's numbers uh, start to kind of uh, level out a little bit. Um, and so, I mean, it's, it's not, and, and the main reason for that is because, you know, Korea being a population of, you know, 50 million, um, we're reaching that level of, uh, of saturation. And so that's something to be uh, mindful of um, when you're, you know, thinking about going into, into Korea. Whoops. Um, I also want to point out that, you know, Korea is very, very trendy. Um, and, you know, that means, you know, whether it's, it's a, a fad or whether it's a celebrity, whether it's a game, a TV show, you know, um, you know people just jump on it. It's almost kind of like a hive mind, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, even, even with games, you know, there's so much heavy marketing on, on one game or another that, you know, they just jump on it, and it really becomes top-heavy. And so when you're breaking into Korea, um, you want to make sure that, um, you know, that you're early um, when you're jumping on, because if, if you're late, you've already missed out. But fortunately, because it is so trendy, you know, uh, tastes and styles, they do jump around a little bit. You know, in the past, it may have been a card battle game at the top, and then it may have been, uh, you know, a 2D side-scroller. You know, now with Blade, you know, you have a full-on, you know, 3D action RPG. Um, so as long as, you know, you're not late to the party, you know, there's still an opportunity for you to, to succeed in Korea. Um, also, in terms of, you know, trendiness, you know, everybody in uh, Korea, they, uh, they have Samsung phones. 85% actually um, of mobile devices are manufactured in South Korea. Uh, six out of ten uh, mobile devices are uh, from Samsung. And uh, in Korea, you have three carriers that, uh, that, that dominate. Um, you have SK Telecom, um, who operate the T-Store. You have uh, LG U+, um, and you have uh, KT with the Olay Store. Um, but uh, you know, the, the, the stores that are offered by the, uh, the carriers have become you know, less and less relevant. You know, over, within the past, I guess, about a year, you know, Google Play quickly overtook T-Store, which used to be the dominant app store. And so, you know, unlike China, you don't have to worry about the hundreds of different app stores. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward when you're doing business in Korea. Um, you know, Google um, is, you know, predominantly where uh, everybody goes to get their apps, um, including uh, Kakao, which has, you know, as you guys are already probably aware, um, has, uh, has exploded in Korea with 145 million users, uh, $203 million in revenue, 400 plus games, 200 plus developers and partners. Um, but I want to point out the, the bottom two numbers because um, that also means that you know, the, the, the cacao store is also starting to see some saturation. 
And um, you know, one of the values of a lot of these messaging apps is that you, know, you have millions and millions of users um, and you have these eyeballs, but when, when, when the app stores start to get filled uh, you know, with a, a large number of games, then discoverability becomes an issue all over again. And so, you know, as, as big as Kakao is, you know, um, you know for, for, for Gameville, um, you know, we've, we've been actually discussing the possibility of, you know, uh, jumping off of Kakao because, again, that saturation. And, you know, when you're, when you're partnering up with additional people, that's just an additional cut of, of, of revenue, right? And so those are kind of things uh, that you kind of also factor into. And so, you know, I guess firstly, you know, should, I, should you publish in Korea? And if so, you know, do you need a publisher? And so, you know, if you're thinking about Korea, there's generally uh, you know, two school of thoughts. Um, one of them is, yes, you, sh you, know, you should find a partner who can help you localize and uh, you know, culturalize your game for the Korean market. And you know, I, I guess you know, the key benefit of partnering with uh, you know, a Korean publisher is that you know, you'll take away some key learnings you know, in terms of you know, how they operate games as a service, um, you know, what, to, to, what to kind of expect, you know, how local partners operate within you know, uh, you know, their respective territories. Um, you know, benefits include distribution and retention know-how, uh, discoverability and monetization, um, you know, built-in user base that you can benefit from, uh, as well as, you know, QA and, uh, you know, customer support. Um, but you should also expect headaches um, because, you know, expectations may be different, you know, some of the visions might be different. And so, so you know, when you're, when you're working with a publisher, um, you know, it becomes a marriage that you're kind of binding into. You know, it's not just a short, you know, fling, you know, with, with more and more mobile games um, being operated as a games as a service, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, you know who you're, um, you know, who you'll be partnering up with. Um, and, you know, some of the headaches can be, you know, philosophical differences. Um, you know, what, what one may consider to be maybe perhaps slightly exploitative or, or I don't know, pay to win, you know, may not necessarily uh, be perceived uh, the same way uh, to a Korean publisher. And so, so those are some of the things that, you know, you should kind of take into consideration. Um, you know, they can also be very demanding, you know. Some publishers in Korea might be asking you to stand by, uh, you know, 24-7, around the clock. Um, you know, they may pressure you to, um, you know, throw out more events, maybe two to three per day, you know. Um, and some, so some of these things um, can um, you know, can definitely become headaches to, to a developer that hasn't experienced uh, a partnership with, with a Korean publisher. Um, the other school of thought, you know, no. Um, you know, if you already have a global version um, that already exists, um, you know, you may be able to just kind of localize the game and get by. Um, but regardless, you know, operating a game, you know, especially if you're a Western developer trying to break into Korea, I mean, I'm not going to lie, it's, it's going to be an uphill uh, battle, an uphill challenge, because, you know, if you, if you look at the top grossing uh, games, you know, in Korea, you know, all of them are actually local games. And, uh, you know, there's so many talented developers in Korea that can churn out these quality games. And so, and, and they, they monetize extremely well, you know, they're marketed heavily. And so, for, for a publisher um, who, who, who looks at the numbers and sees that, you know, the top grossing games are actually Korean games, you know, there will be less incentive for them to kind of really look at a Western developed title unless there's really something special. So, um, so for those, so that's the challenge. And so you may be able to just kind of get by, um, you know, going on your own. You know, some of the benefits of that include just getting a higher revenue share for yourself. You know, you're not, you may not exactly get the kind of boost that you had hoped by, you know, partnering up with a publisher. Um, you know, there's lower development costs, you get to the market faster, again, higher revenue share. And, uh, you know, some of the bigger guys have done that, like, like uh, you know, King, Gameloft, you know, Supercell. But even those guys, you know, they're outside the, uh, the top, top grossing list on, on Google Play, right? Um, so, I mean, there, there are both ways. You know, I only have 10 slides, but I already have 20 seconds left. Um, so, what are publishers looking for? Uh, Ukrainian publishers, at the very least, servers. You know, do you have a back end? Uh, you know, is it something that we can plug into? Because everything in Korea is online. 
Is it Android focused? You know, a large percentage of revenues that are generated from mobile games um, are from Android devices. And uh, be prepared to develop a separate bill for Korea. I mean, you know, again, straight, straight uh, distribution sometimes don't work. You know, again, there are different tastes. And uh, make sure you operate games as a service. You know, again, everything, is, uh, everything in Korea is online, digital. And, um, you know, so the games in Korea generally don't have a beginning and an end. You know, these are ongoing, you know, you, um, where developers are expected to churn out new content, new events, you know, have sales, tournaments, and just engaging the user base over and over. And again, that's, and that's one of the challenges for a Western developer because um, just to have that kind of demand to c continually churn out, um, you know, can be, can be uh, pressuring. Um, and ultimately, you know, with, by operating games as a service, you know, you know, the goal there is to, um, you know, cultivate these, uh, you know, player experiences, these virtual experiences, and uh, build uh, long-lasting communities. Um, some things to avoid, you know, monetization pitfalls. Um, you know, oftentimes when you try to break into Korea, people think that, you know, they may be, you know, more exploitable than your Western gamer. Um, but I, I don't want you guys to kind of fall into that, that trap. Um, and I think there's, there's a misunderstanding because, you know, for the typical Korean gamer, um, you know, their, their spending patterns are different from Western developer or Western, Western gamers because of the way they perceive virtual goods. Um, you know, in the West, um, you know, you'll never compare, you know, a virtual sword with a real sword, right? Um, but for Korean gamers, that virtual asset is just as real as, you know, the, the money you see in your online bank account or, or the virtual sword that you're playing um, or, like, or, or, the real, or the real sword that you may have hanging on your wall. Um, you know, and that's because, again, everything in Korea is online, um, digital, um, you know, and so there's actual value in it. You know, there are cases where a Korean gamer has actually taken, you know, publishers to court over ownership of a digital asset, right? So, um, you know, you guys shouldn't misunderstand and think that, you know, Korean gamers are just more exploitable, and if you focus on monetization loops, then, you know, you'll monetize better. Um, again, you know, I encourage you guys as a gamer, you know, um, you know, gaming is about, you know, just evoking these experiences, these emotions, you know, um, and so focus on, you know, gameplay and, and retention instead of just monetization itself. Um, at the end of the day, I think that's why a lot of us are here making games. Um, you know, that's why we, you know, enjoy playing the games and we're all here at, at, at uh, PG Connect. Um, and, you know, again, in terms of monetization, you know, the free-to-play business model was really introduced in Korea as a way to, uh, you know, monetize these big MMORPGs that are these deep, engaging experiences. Um, and so it's not necessarily just a way to just uh, make money in the sense that where you can take, where you realize that the app store, or where you can't, so let's take, let me take a step back. In the app store, you know, you typically can't sell a paid app for $5, right? Um, and so you, you, don't, you can't simply take maybe what's 10 hours of content, you know, sell it for free, and uh, stretch out the gameplay and just call it free to play, you know. Um, ultimately, it's, it's about delivering it on these experiences. Um, so that's it for me. Uh, thank you guys, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the show.